Welcome back to Rob's Class, guys. In today's video, we're going to be picking up a new aquarium. It's going to be the second saltwater aquarium we're adding into the fish room, but the first reef aquarium. Before we get in the video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. So we're at one of my favorite fish stores. This is Nature Aquariums in Lauder Hill, run by my friend Henry over here, and he's going to be sponsoring today's video with hey. Hank. How you doing, brother? How you doing, brother? So, we're here with Henry. He's going to help us with two things. A, getting this nice little nano reef, and B, helping us out with the skate for the bigger reef that I'm setting up. You guys seen it here and there in some of the videos in the past, but today's video is all about salt water. So, what are we doing today, Henry? What, what do you got in store? For all right, you? so we got a brand new UNS Dual in one uh, system for you. Mm -hmm. It is the 45. It is a nice peninsula tank, so you can put it on the side or peninsula style, and it does all in one. So, I mean, if you ever want to switch it to fresh, you can. So it does both. Uh, yeah, so cool thing. I'm going to hook you up with some accessories with it. Perfect. We're also going to get you a really cool Kessel A80 light. It's going to give you that really crisp blue light, you know, and that shimmer. Yes. <laughs> so you've seen in our in our aquariums here, we love that shimmer. It looks just like if you're snorkeling underwater. You're really mm -hmm. cool. And uh, we're going to help you also do a fish recycle on that. Perfect. Well, before we get into that, I think I want to run around the store for a little bit because there's been a lot of changes since the last time I've been here, guys. I already see the plant section. He's got these super sick paludarium set up with these plants. I'll bring you guys through the store real quick before we get into that. And over here is some of the rocks that we're going to be using the scaping station to set up. Now, I've got like a a whole mix of rocks right here we're gonna get into in a second one of Robbie's socks made it into here I don't really know <laughs> how or why but we got a lot of pieces of rock um, they've all been used in tanks before we got some rocks that are like a little shelving unit and we've got others that are like arches now I'm already thinking this would be perfect for the little peninsula tank how I orientate it I'm not too sure quite yet but we're going to be doing a fishless size school so we'll have not have any fish in it for a little while but we've also got some bigger rocks for that other tank that we could split up and use actually this is a flat bottom piece so this will be a perfect little piece for that tank. All the tanks will be having sand. But now I showed you some of the rocks. Let's get into some of these tanks. This polyudarium setup he's got right here looks insane. Like this is literally perfect. I mean, personally, if I had one of these, I think I'd instantly throw a caiman lizard in it. Like there's no other way to go about it. This one has such a deep tank. It's basically almost probably 30 to 40 gallons just in the water down here. But it's got a cool atomizer up here that makes the waterfall vaporize. He's only running two of them because he told me when he had all four running, it just completely fogged up the tank so honestly i think at some point we'll try to get our hands on one of these because this is a super cool display that we could do mud skippers any semi-aquatic animals it would be a really nice setup down this way we got some more planting stuff this is a lot of stuff you guys have seen if you've been subscribed to the channel we got the beta fish power now i'm thinking about trying to set up some of my betas in here for henry because you know these are pretty on par with the grade that i have but i think i might be able to get him something even a little bit nicer although this beta right here is gorgeous he's got a lot of different species in here that are also very pretty oh look at this one down here this one is beautiful oh that one is gorgeous but he doesn't only have these freshwater aquariums with the beta fish and little plants he's also got other livestock in here as well as some salt water so follow me over here real quick some rocks if you need to escape some some driftwood but over here he's got a lot of tank stuff and if you guys remember from way back when before the house burned down we actually got our discus from here the discus he has are always very very nice everybody looks amazing there's a lot of cool stuff oh my god look at the size on this beta. Oh, <laughs> that's a chunky dude. He's really stocky and big. But we'll jump over to the saltwater section just to see what he's got rolling around here, guys. Now, I'm going to try to diversify and get a lot of saltwater stuff going. Me, personally, I love corals. I'm not so big on the fish. I do like the big predatory fish, but not so much. Anything aside from, like, tangs and stuff of that nature, but... This tank is beautiful. Now, this is basically what we're going to be getting, but on a smaller scale. So this is a peninsula style tank. We'll show you the one I'm getting in just a second here. But real quick, we'll run through the saltwater section and see what kind of coral Henry's working with over here. Got a lot of nice LPS, SPS, and some euphilia. These guys right here, the octospawns and hammer corals are some of my favorite. I do know a lot of cool sources for coral. Henry's got a lot of cool corals. And I'm also in a secret WhatsApp group chat. Got a lot of fire corals as well that I'll probably end up propagating and giving to Henry as well. But he's got a decent amount of salt water. Let's see what else he's got. Is he hiding anything back here? Some more corals, some GSP. He's got some little invertebrates. Oh. Oh, there's a spearing mantis shrimp. Where is he? Oh my god, that starfish is massive. <laughs> Look at the size on that starfish. That thing is huge. 
Well, we toured a lot of the store, guys. There's even more in here. So if you're local to South Florida, you live around Lauder Hill, or even if you live abroad, it is worth checking out Henry's store. And he also has a channel as well, Nature Aquariums. Check that out as well. But now that that's out of the way, we're gonna get back into the setup of what he's actually donating to the channel. This is basically like a housewarming gift from Henry. He's known me for a while, felt really bad about the house fire. So we're doing this little collab because he's giving me a housewarming gift pretty much. So shout out to Henry. He's the only person who did. Look at those clowns. Oh, those things are bus and bus. Oh, me personally though, I love the little storm clownfish. They're so vibrant and doesn't want to focus. Henry is one of the best aquascapers I know, guys. So he's the perfect man for the job to scape this reef tank. Now, if you have a vision for anything freshwater or saltwater, Henry can get it done. Every single tank you've seen in his store, he's done by himself. And as you can see already, the structure for the scape is looking incredible. We've got an arch right there and he's not done quite yet, but he's going to keep working on it. I'm just going to sit back and let him do his thing because he could do far greater than I can with saltwater and freshwater tanks. I'm not too bad, but Henry is great at it. So if you guys are local, definitely stop by if you need some help scaping some tanks. Well, Henry definitely did his thing, guys. The scape he just created literally in the split second has five arches. It's going to have a lot of space and a lot of height for the fish to have their own separate territory. And if you look at it, there's five arches. We're actually going to be able to see through the entire tank on every edge. And it's honestly perfect. On this top shelf right here, we could do some SPS corals. I could have little Zoa gardens down on the sand bed. And I will be putting sand in both of these aquariums simply because it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now, I personally prefer bare bottom, easier maintenance through and through, but the extra sand is always good for the beneficial bacteria to seed. Um, I think it looks great. I'm gonna hopefully not mess it up when we get back to the house after we disassemble it. And now that that's all out of the way, guys, we're going to show you what Henry is actually gifting me for the house. It's a very, very nice little nano reef set up and I'm pretty excited for it. We got to make sure you can kind of put this back together. So we have these little labels and I'm going to start by marking each piece mm -hmm. and then you can take pictures with the labels on them. Ah. So then you're going to know which one does which. I got to go in and start tagging all of them. I don't actually know. So this is how you do it when you're like making a escape. Yeah, this is how. So what I I'm going to tag is every piece and I'm going to get some tape as well. Then you're going to go and take your pictures like that and you'll be able to see how each tag is on there. Okay. So by doing that, then we know which one belongs where. Smart. Very smart. Yeah, because that right, way I'm not going to mess tape. it up back of the house. We'll be able to get it exactly like this. So I'm going to also get some RDI resin from Henry here at the store so I could start making some RO water and get some salt and get that mixed up in both the tanks. And then that way we'll be able to get these things fired up and moving today. What we got here for you, we've labeled every piece, right? You see A, B, C, D, and we're gonna have you take with your phone pictures from above so you can see the angles of it. And as we take them apart and put them into the new box, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go and take care and actually tape up each tag to it so then you'll know how to put it oh, back together okay. so for example now this one a i would lift it i'll just put extra tape around it and keep it and now you'll know that a will be long where it does and you can look back at your phone perfect but also the other thing it's important as we pull layers you're gonna have to take new pictures because you can see how to set and you're gonna work right. backwards in your picture so okay. if you take a picture then you're gonna go to your newest picture that's going to be the base. Ah. Then you start moving forward, you know, backwards on your pictures. That'll be the next layer up and then the next layer up. And then your very last pictures are going to be your first pictures, which will be this. Okay. Like watching a it. movie in reverse. Yeah, I get it. It's like a slideshow. Yeah. Like a mystery movie. You see who done it first and then you figure out how they did it. Perfect. Yeah. I'll, I think I'll be able to manage doing that. And we also got this mortar right here, guys, to set this in place once we get in the tank. And would you recommend... Honestly, yeah, I'd probably do this before I put sand in so yes. that the rocks aren't sitting on sand. Because if you don't, then what could happen is the flow washes the sand out from under the structure and, and you have the whole thing collapse. <laughs> and you break your tank and yep. you lose all your money and your fish and your coral. Yeah, that, and you have a flood. That's, you know, uh, freshwater tanks, the rocks, you should always put them with the substrate. Salt water, always on the glass or on a piece of egg crate. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. The tank's completely clean right now, so it'll be super easy to set up. I'll start ripping off some pictures and then we'll show you guys what he's gifting us it's a very nice little nano peninsula and let me become the photographer boom boom all right okay let me grab my uh, shrink wrap henry's bringing over the tank as we speak and we've got all the rocks from the cell oh he's right here with the tank <laughs> all right. but yeah we got all the rocks right here that we got for the 54 gallon ready to go so we're going to do the same thing for the 9.3 gallon peninsula now this is an all-in-one aquarium very beautiful it's going to come with the light filtration all that good stuff all we got to do is scape and sand it and then we're ready to roll all right so look rob 
in here doing a couple of things. It does mm -hmm. come with a standard uh, sponge block, but I think for you doing the salt water, mm -hmm. you and I talked about, I think doing the sock filter is gonna I be I think better. that would be a great idea. Cool. The other cool thing that's in here, just be careful when transporting. So is it glass? Yeah, it's glass. Oh. Look at that. It's oh, that's glass. Clean. And oh, that covers that is the back. So clean. You see that? And it has a little room to lift up, or you can also fit your light. So if you mount the light over here, you can mm -hmm. actually so take off the foam block. The, yeah, the white blocks. Mm -hmm. And then that'll fit right in here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, because this will probably be lid. Like I'll probably have no lid and I'll just be rimless. Right, but what I'm saying is that you can still leave this rim with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then all we do is uh, take off these white blocks and that piece actually fits like that. And this gooseneck, it'll extend a little further? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, but the so way good. this has the power there, it's more than enough to cast beautiful oh. lighting on it. And then over here is the little pump. So with the three week cycle, fishless cycle, I need to wait three weeks to add anything to the tank. Yes. Because we're going to be dosing ammonia and that means there's gonna constantly be ammonia in there. Yeah, and then here you adjust the flow plus or minus. So okay. I think this is a salt water tank. I would run it full wide open. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So yeah, so the fishless cycling, instead of you having to worry about doing water changes and stuff, you know, to try and not kill the fish because mm -hmm. high nitrite, you're just gonna keep adding ammonia, keep it between one to three PPM. That's the okay. magic word. I'm gonna hook you up with that. I'm gonna get you a bottle of ammonia. I'm gonna get you the bottle of the bacteria. You can do both things on both tanks. And it's one of the, other than adding evaporative water, Mm. you can concentrate on on doing work you Perfect. know and not have to worry about killing anybody once a tank finishes cycle one morning you wake up you test it zero ammonia zero nitrate go start adding some fish mm -hmm. and i do the ammonia every day no every it other takes day about three to four days three to four days so the first three four days nothing's going to happen right because everything's you know the bacteria is just beginning to wake up then all of a sudden around day four you'll notice that the ammonia drops to like 0.25 time to add some more ammonia and then mm -hmm. it'll spike up and then it'll kind of drop every time it drops you keep adding it okay. and then you're going to see your nitrite hit so i really, should be really testing every day every two three days every two three days every two three days dose every two three days test. and Perfect. then if you see that the ammonia is kind of high because the bacteria is still taking their sweet time then you back off what's okay. nice is with this rock this white rock that's not the purple rock it actually cycles faster than the purple stuff how come ah because the purple stuff they coat it with a certain bacteria strain and it conflicts with the bacteria oh. that you put in the bottle whereas this okay. stuff people who cycle it with this cycle way faster so i'm happy that you had the white rock i always prefer the white rock personally to start. yeah it's it's gonna work out really really good so here's your adjustment you know it's got a nice silicone tubing so you put okay. it on top of the pump this goes right through it. This little slit over here, that's mm -hmm. your emergency overflow. So okay. in case something were to happen, this gets uh, clogged up. Water will keep flowing over here. And to it'll still feed the tank. pump. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, that's why they put it on that side. It's got an adjustable middle chamber. And then these are the bio blocks. Okay, and this is what holds bacteria, helps you hold more bacteria. You put it at the bottom and you pretty much set and forget. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. The sand, I won't even need more media than that with all the sand and the rocks in there. No, you're just It'll gonna need, yes, you're yeah. gonna be perfect. This will be great, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So now we gotta figure on the scape. Let me kind of put everything away. I'm gonna set up a mock setup here on mm -hmm. the table and then we're gonna go and scape some. I've got a lot of flat pieces still that would work good. Yep, so, so we're gonna go work on that. I, I wanna see what you got. All right, perfect. And in about two seconds, Henry's already got the scape, guys. If you're in the area and you need help scaping a freshwater or saltwater tank, Henry is the man for that. He literally did this in 0.2 seconds. He gave us this really nice piece of rock right here, and it's got the height, it's got the surface area for us to plant corals and fish to hide and move around and get away from each other. Now, it is a 9.3 gallon saltwater tank. There will not be enough, like a lot of fish. It's probably mostly gonna be like one, clownfish maybe a couple utility fish and that's basically it aside from a lot of coral because realistically i love salt water for the corals to be honest unless i have like a saltwater pond i'm pretty much not going to be getting too crazy with the fish pretty much just going to be like maybe a goby maybe a wrasse and a clownfish in each of these tanks even the 54 gallon will just be a couple tanks and whatnot but this scape right here is perfect great height great space a lot of space we could utilize and it's very very simple there's a couple plat plugs right here that we could even throw corals in now these were rods for scaping so you could stick rods and have it secured even greater but the way it is right now 
This is incredible. Very good, very good. I appreciate it, Henry. You do great work, you do great work. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we're pretty much ready to go, guys. Pack everything up and get it in the truck and bring it back to the house. We're gonna set everything up in the fish room. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Let me remember to take a picture real quick. <laughs> I mean, this one right here, I don't think I could mess this up. That's, it's literally too rot. Well, we'll see if I mess it up when we get back to that. <laughs> but uh, thank you again, Henry, this is amazing. Cool. Now we gotta get you set up with the ammonia and the bacteria. Right, we do need to do that, because otherwise this fishless cycle isn't going to work. So what are we doing over here, Henry? Explain this to me. I've never done a fishless cycle before. All right, so I used a lot of products before. We do, shoot, we've done the whole store fishless cycling. We did it mm. at our old store 10 years ago, before they sold ammonia in a bottle. I used to buy lab-grade ammonia, oh. and actually... For customers, I used to put it in like little Ziploc bag. Yeah. You know, I wasn't drug dealing. I was no, just dealing was ammonia. Say, little local okay, drug fish dealer. Pee, I was a you know fish pee drug dealer. You know, but that's how we got people going onto this. And uh, nowadays, they do have the products. I really like the Brightwell products from Chris Brightwell. Uh, at least I buy direct from them. So mm -hmm. the bacteria that you're getting this was bottled the day before they FedEx it to us. Oh, so it's fresh. Super fresh. So they make two two products. And everybody's been using in the reefing community, Microbacter 7. This is like the staple. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes. All the guys who grow corals, coral farms, they dump this, you know, every week. This guy over here, it's just used for starting tanks. It's like starter fluid for a car. Mm -hmm. And it's 15 times concentrated. Oh, wow. And this has ammonia, but it has ammonia plus a little bit of phosphate, plus a little bit of nitrate, plus a couple other trace elements that the bacteria feeds upon. Mm -hmm. Because you're making synthetic seawater, right? Right. Super Super clean RODI water. There's nothing in it. There's nothing, There's in, nothing it. in it. And what happened, Brightwell figured out, is that the tanks were stalling, and that's why it gave fishless cycling a bad name. The mm. bacteria didn't have enough of the dirt that right. you normally would have with feeding and with everything so else. So I could get the dirt by putting an octopus in the tank. Yeah. Right? We can talk right? about it. Yeah, we'll get you an inflatable one. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and so um, what this does here, the quick cycle is the fish pee plus a couple of things to feed the bacteria and to make it more hospitable uh, mm -hmm. for it to grow. And I'm going to write it all down for you. I have a little prescription pad. And then you're going to be adding the bacteria every week. You're going to be adding this every two to three days or as needed. And then all of a sudden one day you're going to wake up and you're going to see the nitrites are at zero, the ammonia is at zero. Usually what I recommend is give another dose of ammonia to simulate like you're putting in five, six fish in there. Oh, like a heavy dose? No, same dosage, same dose? but it basically getting that ammonia up to 3 ppm within an hour, it should drop to 1 ppm. With a couple more hours, it should be down to zero. If it does that, then it means now you, whatever fish you put in, you won't have any spikes. And it would just be smooth sailing. It would be like this would have been rock that was cured out of the ocean, mm -hmm. except you're not putting any critters, you're not putting, bringing any eggs, right. you're not right. bringing any, you know, aptasia or anything else because you're working with nice, clean stuff. And by the way, you have really nice, clean rock, you know. Yeah, yeah, that rock will be oh, money. Man. Nothing like a fresh start. It. Yeah, nothing like a fresh start. So, so that's what I'm doing. I'm getting you an extra large size because you're going to need it for both tanks. Is it cool if I leave the light off during this process? Do. That's Do. best advice. I was, I was thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. just only turn it on for for shoots and for viewing it okay. but leave it off because nothing good's gonna happen it's just gonna grow algae <laughs> and it's gonna compete with the bacteria yeah excellent point big brain big brain so yeah so this is all you're gonna need um i'm gonna write it down i'm gonna write down a prescription for the little uh, nine gallon and for your mm -hmm. 70 some gallon uh tank perfect that's awesome cool thank you awesome we'll thank get to again. it and do you have di resin yes i do how much do you need um, will that this will be good a for cartridge. a canister? Yes. Okay, this That'll is all I need then. Yeah, that will fill that. And then I have it in bulk. So if you ever need it in the future, mm -hmm. I'll hook you up with the bulk bags. Perfect, perfect. But at least that'll get you going right now. Yeah, this will get us started in the right direction. All right, Rob. So this is the nine gallon tank. You're mm -hmm. going to start off with two caps every week of the bacteria and then 25 drops of the ammonia. Make sure you keep it between one to three ppm. Okay. And then the 70 gallon, 18 caps of the bacteria every week. And then you're going to keep one uh, to three ppm by putting two and a half caps of the ammonia. Perfect. So I wanted to also give you this so you can keep track of your where your ammonia, your nitrite is. Okay. Now, last thing. Thing. So UNS kind of helped co-sponsored this. Mm -hmm. So they helped out with the tank. I also, they sent for you oh. a cool UNS keychain <laughs> and UNS cool. microfiber. Oh, uh, this clock. is awesome. Yeah, so you can keep your tank nice and shiny. And very nice, very nice. I don't actually have an algae scrubber at the house. I've been using a sock on my hand. Yeah, uh, maybe that sock you can, you know, not- Retire it. Yeah, yeah you can retire, retire the sock. <laughs> yeah. The sock that keeps traveling. 
Yeah, I'll use, I'll use this instead for sure, because Microsoft Fiber Guys is also really good for the glass. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna scratch it at all, so it'll be yeah. perfect. So you can keep it nice, especially when, before you do your shoots, get rid of some of that glare and keep it real nice. Perfect, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna put all this in a bag, dude, and mm -hmm. I can't wait to see the video. Yep, it'll be up soon. And so now, guys, I got both tanks completely scaped and set up, ready to go. So we've got the 9.3 gallon right behind me. The desk is a mess because I've been doing a lot. There's actually some betta fish laying around on this desk as well. But if you look into the 9.3 gallon peninsula, I didn't actually end up getting the scape correct like we did before, but I do kind of like how this scape is set up right now because I feel like it's lower sitting so I could actually put more stuff in it. The way we had before it would have actually ran into the pump right here and what i really like about the kessel light henry gave us is guys i could just completely adjust it just by turning this little nozzle like nozzle right here so it's going to be super easy for me to adjust i really really do enjoy it camera girl is fuming right now she's trying to sleep but the grind doesn't stop but the 54 gallon tank is looking incredible right now guys with the scape in it i don't know how i feel about this rock however we do have two lights for this tank sitting right here now everything you see guys it seems like i'm spending a lot of money Money. I still am, but not as much as I could be. I've also got a five-stage RDI. The only reason these tanks aren't filled up all the way right now is this guy is because that RDI unit is reading at 53 parts per million after the water has ran through all the filters. And that's no good. That's no good. You need to read zero. And that's because I get everything off of Facebook Marketplace. That system, that filter I was just telling you about, 50 bucks. This tank you just saw, the 54 gallon, I got this for a steal for 200 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace. I got everything you see right here, as well as down here with the tank stand, sump, ATO, skimmer, and the pump, and all the electronics that run with it. I got all of this stuff right here for 200 bucks. So it looks like I spent a lot of money. Retail, this would have been like 2K, spent 200. And the reason why he was selling it for so low is because this front seal was broken. It busted on him, but I had my friend reseal it, and now it's good to go. The scape's looking great, there's sand in it. So next video, I will be filling this up. By then I'll have this all situated, but in the time being, I'm working on trying to keep my fish alive during this cold front, and I'm also playing around with a bunch of betta fish. You can see there's already something new going on with this tank right here. I've got one betta fish right there, two more right here. And Henry also ordered in some brackets for us for these lights. By the way, I got these lights off Facebook Marketplace as well. Literally constantly crum coming up on deals. Like I'm on there like a hawk. Can you turn the heater on? Did I turn the heater on? Somewhere? I'm asking a question. It's, it's actually funny you mentioned it because I was just about to talk about that, guys. Because it's so cold, <laughs> I turned the heater up to 74 degrees so every tank in the house stays at temperature. Timmy just noticed because also Robbie was telling me there's this funny smell to the house. Do you have anything to say about me trying to take care of my fish? You want to kiss? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, hey, yo! <laughs> <I'm still here. laughs> but, yeah. Because I do pay rent here. <laughs> and you can buy a meter. <laughs> you. <laughs> no, that's not how this works. <laughs> see, see, this is. Uh, <laughs> see how? See what I'm dealing with here, guys? There's tyranny all the time. But the reason why I set it to 74 is, guys, is because these last yet yeah, last night it was 50 degrees in South Florida. Horrible for my fish tanks in the garage and outside. And I mean, honestly, the garage fish I've been doing really, really well. We've got the beta fish. Hey, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Don't touch it, guys. It's tough out here. Off. Unbelievable. But the beta fish in this tank are all doing really well. Everything in the fish room is doing great and all the beta fish in the tubs as well as this tank over here are also doing great. Now I've been selling some. It's moving a little slow, but it's fine because I've been doing water changes every day. The update on these guys is coming out, but I got some worse news about the tanks outside as far as what's going on out there because 50 degrees, are you, oh, are you to trying to get in my... No, I wasn't. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just making sure. I was just making sure. Anyways, guys, before we were rudely interrupted, you could see I've got not only more fish in the 300 gallon tank, because I did buy more fish in a video, you guys, you will see very shortly. There's also a tarp and a heater on the 300 gallon tank and you'll find out why very shortly because the video of me trying to save my fish from this cold front is coming out soon it's been kind of brutal out here i'm not gonna lie but that is it for today's video please like the video subscribe channel and turn on post notifications i was not kidding about trying to get an octopus i've had a genius idea on how to keep one alive and in the tank so in three weeks, expect another saltwater video because we're going to blow out the 9.3 gallon and just go crazy. But I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, subscribe channel, and turn on post notifications if you did. And if you don't, Rob, I'm going to stick Robbie on you. Ah. <laughs>